Today we're going to do Peking duck. It's always divine to have it in a Chinese restaurant, but let me show you how easy, although time consuming it is to do it at home. Now, it's important that you buy a real Peking duck and the duck farm actually have quite good pro uh, product. And it's in available in the supermarket in frozen form. Now, this duck has been taken out of the paper, it's just been given a wipe over. And now we are going to remove the preen gland. I've just cut this loose so that you can see. Can you see these enormous oil glands that sit right at the end of the parson's nose? Just make sure you cut them off because they can give a rancid taste to the duck. Then turn it over and you will find that most ducks have quite a lot of fat sitting right here in the cavity. Just remove that. And although, I mean, duck fat is wonderful. It's absolutely brilliant to roast potatoes in. And then we've got the little bag here with the giblets. Now, um, please keep the liver separate because it makes the most wonderful liver pate. And then there is the neck here and the little tummy, which you can add to a soup, which would be beautiful in that. Now, the next thing is to make absolutely sure that you dry the inside of the cavity really well. Once you've dried the inside, then we've got a mixture of seasoning here. It's sugar, seasoned sea salt, and there's a little bit of five spice powder. There is a recipe on the website on how to make your own five spice powder. Now, once you've seasoned it, close this lot up. Give it a good shake to distribute that seasoning all over. Now, the next step, you're supposed to leave this to sit for an hour for the seasoning to pull through. But let's just expedite this now. The seasoning is sticking nicely to the inside. Now what I need next is, this is one of our empty pasta bottles that we've removed the label. Just put the pasta bottle in there. In here is some boiling water with vinegar added. And you simply just ladle the boiling vinegar water over and you will notice that in the beginning the little pores or little goosebumps is very small but as you continue the goosebumps get bigger and bigger as the vinegar water opens the pores and we can pour the remaining water over and now just carry on a little bit longer. Just scoop from the wok. I can already see how oily this water has become. So now you've opened the pores. And the purpose of that is as you're roasting it, the, the, the fat just pours out of those pores. Now once we've done this properly, then this duck will stand it up in a tray. Now the next thing is we either have to dry it overnight in the fridge or alternatively we can dry it with a fan. Right, now we have our duck facing towards the fan and we switch on the fan and now we simply just leave it to stand. If you have an hour, that is first prize. And just as you walk past, just give it a turn to make sure that the entire duck is getting properly, properly dried. Now we've got one that is already dry. Once the, the duck has dried, the skin becomes tight and it becomes shiny. Now at this stage, we take the duck off the bottle and we fill this bottle 
three quarters full with boiling water. Now we fill this three quarters full with boiling water. We sit the duck on this. Now can you see the rationale behind this? Because the steam from the boiling water is going to cook the inside of the duck and it expedites the cooking and it also helps to drive the fat out of the skin. So that sits quite firmly and it is really a good idea to pour a little bit of water in the pan so that you don't get those smoky black fumes in your oven while the, uh, the duck is roasting. So this duck, the sitting duck, will now go into the oven for an hour and a half. Wow, that looks stunning. Can you see what we've achieved here? Is this enormous amount of fat which is sitting in the tray and the duck skin is lovely and crisp. Now in order to give that almost a varnished look, a glossy look, we're going to use some of the honey and soy sauce and pour it into we need about half for basting and half for serving. So pour about half of it in and use a basting brush. And then we just do a little painting job here. Come, sweetheart. Give you a nice brown suntan. So now this baby goes back in the oven. We bake her for another 10 minutes. Then we give her another coat of paint and then we see how we go, whether we need another coat of paint or not. You can see that is perfect. You see that lovely mahogany, shiny look. Now, let's lift this duck up by the wings. Let's pull out the bottle. Put the duck down on the carving board. Now, it is definitely best to wait for 10 minutes to, before you carve the duck so that the meat just settles a little bit. Right, now what we're going to do first of all is to peel off the skin and then we'll cut the meat in tiny little pieces. Whoops. Now we've stripped the meat off the breast part, we can do the rest as well, and then you cut the breast off. Once you've got the meat off, then you can see this is the grain of the meat running this way. So cut it across the grain into smaller pieces. Oh, this is really beautifully tender now. Now we've made some little pancakes about 20 centimetre in diameter. And we've made these in advance and we've layered them with baking paper in between and they freeze beautifully so you can easily do this in advance. So you take a pancake and first of all you put a nice crispy piece of the skin on the pancake. Now the seasoned salt has got all the flavours that you, you need, so just give it a little seasoning. And then you put some meat onto there. Then you take a little bit of your sauce, honey and soy sauce, just a little squeeze. And now we use the spring onions. Got some nice fine spring onions and then you just fold this over. So for each of your guests, you will have a, a little pancake roll with the spring onion bunch. And this is the one instance where you don't try and use chopsticks. Here you can happily roll this lot up and simply just eat it out of hand. Bon appétit.